I'm here today with uh, Mark Hutter from Michaels Corporation. I'm Kevin Miller, Executive Director at Thelma. And we're having a conversation about our current exhibit. Mention by Der Arbeit, H.D. Thiele's exhibit, a German painter that was commissioned by the folks at Michaels to tell their story. And we've got roughly 15 to 20 pieces here at Thelma, on both floors, and we're honored to have them. We thought we'd have a bit of a conversation about what we're, we're looking at here. And we'd like you to hopefully come and visit them, see them for yourself. And we're delighted to be able to share them with the community. And we're very lucky that, uh, uh, Michael, these, these pieces are, you live and work with these pieces because they're at the corporate office in Brownsville. So. The Michaels thought it would be nice to share it with the rest of the community, their story, but also the great art that HDT Lays created to, to tell the Michaels Corp story. So when you look at this art, this is what would be appropriate for the Fond du Lac community. That's one of the reasons why it had great appeal for us to exhibit it in the facility. Also because your artist, Tilly, has a CV that uh, is impressive to say the least. He's, you know, Grama Museum in Milwaukee at Milwaukee School of Engineering. They have the largest collection of his works on display. Okay. So that tells us, okay, you know, uh, well worth bringing to Fond du Lac, well worth exhibiting. So, what was it about this particular artist that the folks at Michaels, why, why they want to commission his work? I think there are probably two components, and you can see it when you look at some of the pieces of uh, the art that are exhibited here. People are prominent mm -hmm. in many of these. And really, how do you capture the interaction of machine and, and person? Right. And, and I think that that's really what captured uh, the Michaels family imagination when they saw some of his work and said, hey, maybe we can commission him to do one or two pieces, which one or two led to more. And recently, uh, I think the last commissioning was about six pieces, which were recently finished. Do you, it's interesting about the, the comment you made about the people, do you think that is a story that, about the Michaels family? I mean, that, at the heart of this, this is kind of the story that's revealed through the different pieces of work on display. Going back with Dale Michaels, there's a great piece here where, where Dale's out on the street. And we think about the genesis of the company that I think is an image everybody has in their head where the Michaels started from, you know, with the, the pipeline and cable, laying, you know, digging the trenches for the cable. And then it just grows and grows and grows to this incredibly expansive story in sites and places in the world and projects of unimaginable scope, you know, when you think about the technology. Do you, do you think that, I know you can't speak for the Michaels themselves, but, Absolutely. <laughs> but it feels like the company, you know what I mean? When I look at this art, it feels like that story we all tell about the Michaels Corporation. Well, there, there are two components, well, there are many components to the success of the company, but two of those have been the fact that making resources available to our people in the field. The right equipment, new equipment that's safer. So the machines are important. You gotta have the big stuff to do this big stuff, right? Well, the big stuff is cool. Yeah, it is you a know, lot, it is really cool. But uh, you know, there's the one picture over here where uh, the guys are doing the directional drilling. And it is, it's art and science at work. You know, you gotta have the equipment that can technically do it. But it's not like you or I could sit in there and press a couple buttons and make it work. It's really understanding how the earth interacts with some of these machines. And, and that's why I, me personally, that's what I love about these. It captures the people part and the technology part. And, you know, one of the other things that's really amazing, and, you know, the, the picture over there, it shows the pleasant little snow laying on the ground. But our folks are working outside, really hot, really cold, really buggy, you know, whatever it is, uh, they're out in the conditions every day and uh, it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's tremendous. And it's the, you know, the piece that strikes me is the deep tunnel project. You've got, the guys are down in the tunnel, you know, uh, you stop and think about that, you know, you get over what a great piece of art that, that image was, but then, yeah, these are guys. I mean, how far down on the earth 
are they? Well, it could be any number of things. The, uh, the San Francisco Bay Tunnel job, I believe that they're 65 feet below the bottom of the bay, so that's maybe 150 feet down to the bottom of the shaft. Uh, and, and then, you know, the other component of it, too, is that that tunnel was over five miles long. Just going on one of these trolley cars towards the end of the job to get all the way to the front was over a half hour. So are they running, what's, what's the goal of the, 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 the is it oil? I mean, no, that particular job uh, is part of the improvement of the fresh water system oh, in the San Francisco sure, Bay. Yeah. So the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, yep. uh, this is, there are about five tunnel segments or pipe segments and this is one of those five segments for this project to improve the reliability of that system. So here's this company from Brownsville. Brownsville, Wisconsin, as flat as flat can be, right? <laughs> they're doing a deep tunnel project in San Francisco, California. What are, in this exhibit, what other places are represented and what other countries are represented? Sure, well, Michael's work is, in, in any given year, works in just about all 50 states several provinces and maybe one or two foreign countries. So this year we're working in American Samoa, uh, in addition to Canada and the U.S. So it just kind of uh, depends. But um, I, I think that that's one of the things, too, where we, the stuff that we do, people need everywhere. You know, infrastructure is getting older, or in newer locations, they need new, bigger infrastructure. And so, uh, you know, it, it's a universal need. Um, so, so that's one component of it. Uh, the other part of it, too, is if you look at even just over the last five years, the corporation has grown a lot. Some of it is just doing more of what we've done before mm -hmm. or bigger of what we've done before. But uh, another part of it is I, I love the shot in uh, Chicago where we're working right uh, near the Chicago Sun-Times building okay. and right near the Amtrak station at Lake Avenue and, or Lake Street and, and, the, and the river. And it, it was such a high-profile job and that was kind of a new market for us. And it really has expanded tremendous, that's one of our fastest growing divisions now. But part of that is also the uh, adventurous spirit and the risk-taking spirit of Dale Michaels uh, is perpetuated in, in his sons. And not everyone wants to take on a risk of a five mile tunnel underneath the bay no, or most, most, working right next to the end. Most normal amp. people would. <laughs> so. And so, you know, and I think that uh, you look at, there, there's so many different settings here. Some of them look kind of pe peaceful or calm, and other of them you're kind of like, I wonder what's really going on right, there. There's right, a lot right. of stuff happening. Everything underground. Is, uh, <laughs> Difficult. You know, the, the other story that pops out is technology, the, the evolution of from the small company, you know, with a couple of trucks to modern, you know, some of the pieces that we'll see kind of highlight almost a science fiction quality to mm -hmm. what, what you got doing, what you're accomplishing in these pieces. The piece in front of Mount McKinley in Alaska, you know, that's got a real sense of future to it you know, yeah what's next because now you know they get the windmill and all that technology and that's recent i mean in the last 10 years that's made the big the big leap maybe 10 to 15 years um is that a big part of mike like where are we going next so i'm going to say yes and no okay uh the yes part of it is we're um because of you know horizontal directional drilling we're the leaders in north america if not the world uh, we do projects that no one else does. Those machines we make in Brownsville, Wisconsin, because cool. we know how to tweak them and do certain things that no one else does with the machines that allows us to do that technically. So that's the cutting edge portion of what we're involved in. The other part of it is we're doing 30 crews every day in cities like Chicago, where we're replacing 20, 60, 100-year-old infrastructure that's just worn out. And so that's the old part of it, that new technology isn't needed, but 
to replace the things, you know, once upon a time it was new technology maybe, but now all that, a lot of that needs to be replaced. So some of the work we do is because we're very technologically advanced and you can do things that you couldn't do five or ten years ago. Other of it is just kind of the normal blocking and tackling that needs to be done to keep cities working. So you're designing this equipment in Brownsville, right there. Design right. and construct it right down there. Wow. You know, a few years ago, I was on Michael's property. <laughs> got to use a few of the, uh, the jackhammer, and then, of course, they ran me off of <laughs> You know, I bring it up because that story, the fact that that's going on out with this with this 21st century advanced technology that's an investment in, in people, jobs, tech, and that's going on right here. We like to, you know, in the Fond du Lac area, we keep talking about what's going on in Fond du Lac, how we're taking these big leaps forward. And there'll be people that are dubious about it. I'm like, look at, look at what's going on around you. Look at what folks like the Michaels Corporation and some of the other industries that we've got in the area, look what they're doing. So yes, the community as a whole also has to embrace that and take a step forward so the rest of the world doesn't pass us by. And you know, when we talk about Thelma, that's exactly you know, why we went from the small, you know, the old, you were talking about the old and the new, we had the old Masonic Temple, which we still utilize, we still need, we still value, but at the same time we've got to take this other leap to, to, to prepare for the future, to make sure that we stay relevant for our community and for the kids that are coming up. And then as I look around this art, in talking to a guy from Michaels, I'm like, well, why did Michaels commission Tilly to, to, you know, something we haven't talked yet about is the artist himself. Why did you, why do you think they commissioned this, this painter to tell the story of Michaels? Because there's so many other ways they could have done it, you know? Right, I think that when you look at the difference between one of these pieces of art and a photograph, these are richer, more complex, it just is more engaging as a viewer. So if you're walking into Michael's in Brownsville and you have to wait five or ten minutes to, for a meeting, would you rather sit there and just have a video scrolling? Or would you rather and say, boy, look at the coloring there and look at the expression on the face. And I, me, that's why I like them. I, I can't, I don't know the specific one thing that caused the uh, family to make this big investment, uh, but that to me is what's really, it, it says so much more because of the artistic touch that uh, Tilly, Mr. Hare Tilly put on these. Hans, uh, Hans Dietrich, yeah, and, and that's the other fact in the equation, he is a brilliant painter. You know? mm -hmm. we, we mentioned the Grand Museum at, at MSOE, there's a reason why, you know, men at work, people at work, why it resonates, I think, in this area, not just because we're the German culture, the German <laughs> heritage we all, we all come from, but I think it re represents the work ethic uh, of the region and of the people that are here. And I, I think that's why people, not only just the artistry of the pieces themselves, but the spirit behind it, and I think it's the work ethic. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and when I look at his work, my gosh, I mean, the, the work ethic that he has himself, Thiele, to, to, to create this, kind of goes hand in hand with what the Michaels are doing, you know, when you tell that story of, yeah, they're designing this equipment in Brownsville. Oh, right, exactly, stuff. yeah. Well, how about we, you want to take a look and we'll go see some of the art and we can kind of talk a little bit more in depth about what we're actually seeing in some of the paintings. Sounds good to me. All right. All right, very good. So what, what do we got here, Mark? What are we looking at specifically? This is uh, downtown Chicago. Uh, if you were right over here going this direction, this is into the Amtrak station and the Union Station. We're right on the Chicago River here. This project involved about 60 of these large diameter caissons and we had to rebuild the, the dock wall as well. And it was very high profile because how many million people a day are watching what's going on? But this is a little unique in that we don't do much related to buildings. We're usually on the ground, underground, and this project, uh, this is a newer division for us, our Deep Foundations Group, and we're actually building the foundations upon which this kind of uh, outdoor area and related uh, high-rise residence will be located. And it's, it's really a, a neat operation. Some of the challenges with this is you can get a feel for it, but when you have all this large equipment in a very small footprint, 
which is a lot different from some of the pipeline jobs where maybe you're across a farm field. This, uh, you know, and, and safety is so important in all that we're doing, whether it's on the job site or pulling out into traffic, whatever it is. So this presents a, a new challenge for us, but it's a, a great opportunity for us to grow in some new markets. I, I just, I love this uh, picture. And I visited uh, this job site and one a couple blocks away several times and to see the progress as things are going on is a great, great fun for me personally. <laughs> Does the company take great pride in the fact that when you're in a high visibility area, like you said, normally you're out in a farm field somewhere, but now you're in Chicago, Illinois, and Michael's, Michael's is everywhere. You got it on the crane there. You know, right. I always get a kick when you're driving to Twin Cities or somewhere, and all of a sudden a little Michael's truck just goes right by. You know, you're like, that's, that's one of the things we, we try to convey to people that, hey, you're, the, you're representing what Michael's is to the rest of the world. And the red trucks are recognizable. There are many stories that are pretty humorous about people running into them in faraway places. But uh, that is, um, that's our best advertising right there, a big piece of equipment with people working safely and efficiently and building cool stuff. Yeah, we use it as a, you know, not just economic development, but sense of pride for the Fond du Lac region when you start talking about who's here. Michael's Corporation is down the road at Brownsville. I mean, people take notice of that. And it tells, a, a, I think, a significant story about who we are as a people, just like I think it does for your company when, you have, when you're in those moments, like the Chicago piece. I love the reflection. I, mean, I think that's just. Yeah, there, there's some uh, great the craft perspective there. Tilly's work is, you know, they, I think the family was right when they commissioned it. The other thing that I like about his work, too, is the colors. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go to each one of these, and that's a perspective. Uh, you know, we, we can go down the list here, and even the one next door here. It's very bright. With the umbrella, the yeah. bright green umbrella. It looks like my grandmother would I mean, it's just, uh, <laughs> it, it just, it, it just is so expressive, the, the colors that he uses on, on and they're, and they're some of their work sites, their construction sites. I'm sure right. if you talk yeah. to these guys, they'd find nothing about what they're doing is artful or worthy of, but look at this. And, and this is a more really of a, a more of a little bit more historical shot. I'm not sure what circa this would be, but this is a, a little bit uh, older work yeah, we're scene. Not seeing, uh, we're not seeing the big cranes and the same pipeline and some trucks. Right, and you can see by what the what the gentlemen are wearing on yeah. the work site, uh, whether that be the the PPE or the types of dungarees and things like that. So the umbrella is still part of the. Uh, they they will do that because uh, you have an operator who's out there for ten hours at a time. I mean, when they're going, they really are. They're, you can't believe how fast they're sure. moving on this right away. This. Uh, this particular shot represents some uh, work that um, was done in Boston Harbor. That's where I was going to and, and that was kind of one of our first mega projects, which is, is really cool. And I, I love this picture because it's a representation of the people yeah. and the technology working together. And you, without, without one or the other, you couldn't, you couldn't make it work. So what is this piece that they're hoisting That's the, uh, the head of a uh, horizontal directional drilling machine. So you will start on one side of a body of water or whatever and you ream this way and back and forth and then you use that same machine on one end to pull the pipe back in. The machine that is either reaming the hole or pulling the pipe in, those machines are the ones that I referenced earlier that we make in, in Brownsville. A lot of people know us by the quarries because mm -hmm. we've got 100 pits and quarries in this well, part of the state. So when people are driving here or there, they see the quarry and then they say, well, geez, is that the same company that does pipeline or does this or does that? And uh, so it, it is, uh, that is uh, in this market area a big, a, big part of, uh, a big part of what the public sees us sure. as, sure. providing the aggregate or building the highways. Um, so, anyways, yeah. yeah I mean, well, it's it would come in handy if you're building the highways. Right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, this is the piece that I guess I would call it the one that is my favorite, just because of the the technique that Tila used here. But you know, I think 
I think there is a fascination with the deep tunnel projects anyways, because it just, well, for one, it seems fairly dangerous. Um, yeah. The, when you look at this and how he painted it and how it, your focus goes in about three different directions all on one canvas. And then you've got your story again, like what you were talking about, there's, there's people down there. Right. So, so there, you know, in a large tunnel job, usually you have to build a shaft. So that's what we're looking at here. There are different manners in which to do it, but this is kind of a traditional uh, way with the, you know, the ribbing and the, the wood planks. And then usually you get down to the bottom and that's where you do a lot of the work. And uh, it is, it is um, the people that work in tunnels, it's a different breed. You, I was gonna say, you've gotta be a little, it's like the guys in the skyscrapers tooling around, you know. With, uh, and, and you know, and you could say that about some of, you know, or the guys that are on the, the uh, high voltage structures, uh, you know, 150 feet off the ground or whatever it is. These, you know, these are true craftsmen that are working in very challenging conditions. Do you have to worry about the thing, like the bends? I know in the old days when they, like when they built the Brooklyn Bridge and they put those caissons in the middle and they, they that right. was a huge right. part of that story. So on some of these larger projects, and especially where you have a long tunnel, mm -hmm. so they might be far away from where you could get help, we will have a hyperbaric chamber actually built into the tunneling machine uh, should you have to, they call it, say, make an intervention. And uh, thankfully, it's hardly ever used, but you know, it's kind of like the umbrella, you want to make sure you've got it there. And when the, and here again, the safety of our workers and or the public is something we take into account in planning and designing any job. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is a really neat piece of work here again. And here again, just very subtly, my eye, I li I li I'm drawn to color. And so just, uh, you know, a few of the highlights there in rather this uh, earth tone shot really highlight the people. You're drawn to the bottom where a lot of the work's going on, but if this isn't all done right. <laughs> you don't see, and our eye does, our eye goes all the, and then you pointed out earlier, segment there that's that's daylight, a reflection right? up to the yeah so this could be I, I don't know on this particular job what the depth of the shaft was but it could be 150 feet down to the bottom could you really I mean I it looked to me like artist artistic license the reflection could you see um, yeah, I, you, that, you know you might be able to sure yeah really? if, if things are just right with the the you know the sun the right, sun, uh, yeah, the right and the right long, longitude and latitude you probably you probably could um, we've never had any artists take artistic license have we Kevin never. <laughs> Most people in the arts, it's just cut and dry yeah and, you know but no I, I, I love this piece because there's so much there is like you say so much going on in mm -hmm. it. Uh, and then the use of color, even the non, you know, like you said, the muted colors actually help help drive our focus mm -hmm. down to what was important. To people. Right. If you look at a lot of uh, Tilly's work, there are people in industry doing something, and uh, and that's I think one of the appeals of uh, of the Michaels family is because they are the people are so integral to making sure our operations run the right way. On the right hand side here, this is uh, taken from an actual photo from uh, the first couple years of operation of the company. And, and I think it, the, the best part about Dale in connection with this company is he liked being in the field, talking to the guys, how can we do this better? What's the, you know, how, do you, how can you adjust this equipment? How can we be more efficient? And he, he loved being out there interacting with that, uh, with, with the people in the field, and also making sure that people had the resources to do the job properly. Mm -hmm. um, there are many stories about his attention to detail on keeping equipment up to date. You know, every Saturday morning going into the yard and checking to see if people, if the oil's been changed and the truck's clean and you know, that, that's, that was, a re even back then, the red trucks were so representative of, of what Michaels was, was all about. Just a, a great, uh, a great leader and set the, set the table for the success 
that we're enjoying today. What street do we, do we think that is? What street do you live on? Ah, good answer. <laughs> it does. Look, I mean, it looks like it could be Fond du Lac. You know, it, right. It's got I, somewhere in the Midwest. You know? Yeah, and I think, you know, the neat thing about some of these photos is we kind of forget about all the stuff that's buried underground. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, this really drives it home. I mean, you're, we're working in someone's front yard over here and uh, gumming up the street, so to speak. And that's why uh, it's it's it really represents a lot of different components of of the work that we do yeah. on a regular basis. No, and also, you can see here, if you look back, um, the folks are not wearing hard hats, don't have safety glasses. <laughs> so this is, and really, uh, 1959. yeah, so one of the things that is true, you've heard me mention safety numerous times, but the first year of operation, um, Dale Michaels was seriously injured on the job. Is that right? And he was in and out of the hospital for a year. And he wanted to make sure that no families experienced what he and his family and business had to be put through. So long before it was popular and in vogue, Dale Michaels was talking safety. That's interesting. I've not heard this. Story. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us here today, folks. And thanks, Mark, for uh, sharing the, the story of, of Michaels Corporation. And certainly thanks to the Michaels Corporation for telling their story with art, with, with H.D. Thiele's great work. I, I think it's a wonderful fit here in Thelma and for Fond du Lac. We hope people come and visit us and see these great paintings and see the great story of, of, of Michael's Corporation told in art. Thank you for allowing us to be part of it. Uh, we're, we're an integral part of the community and we're, we're happy to participate. Great. All right, folks. We'll see you soon. Come and see. Mention by their Arbeit.